What's up everyone, welcome back, Patrick here, moving on to the next example dealing with piecewise functions. So we have these two piecewise functions here that we have to graph. So starting with this first one, we got negative one over x plus three for x values that are less than or equal to negative two, two to the power of x minus one when x is greater than negative two but less than or equal to positive three and then x plus one when x is greater than three. And so to start this off, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to graph first um, this reciprocal function in general, okay, and the negative one over x plus three, just because it's a little bit more complex, we're going to have a vertical asymptote, horizontal asymptote, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm going to graph it in general first, and then I'll limit the domain according to the piecewise function. So if we were to graph this in general, uh, the parent function is 1 over x, the reciprocal function. We're shifting it 3 to the left, right? So we're going to have a vertical asymptote at negative 3. And then the negative 1, it reflects it in the uh, x-axis, right? And then it's, uh, for example, if you want to get another characteristic or another point, you could plug in 0 for x to get the y-intercept. It would be negative 1 over 3, which is like around there, right? And so we know that the vertical asymptote's on negative three, the horizontal asymptote, well, the C value is just zero. So the horizontal asymptote is at Y equals zero. It's just the X axis. And then it has to go through this point. So we know that this function, it's gonna look something like this, right? And so we would basically, let's make it a nicer curve, something like that. Right, so that's how this function, negative one over x plus three, looks like in general. However, we have to limit this domain, right, to x values less than or equal to negative two. So where's negative two gonna be? Well, that's gonna be about here, right? And then where is the y value gonna be? If we plug in negative two into this reciprocal function, negative two plus three is one, Negative 1 divided by 1 is negative 1. So we know that the y value of that point is going to be negative 1. And notice that the function is going to end with a solid dot because it's less than or equal to negative 2, right? If it was, um, if it was just less than negative 2, then that would be a hole right there. But it's including that x value of negative 2, so we put a solid dot there. Okay, so that function is only defined for x values less than or equal to negative 2. So what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to erase the rest of this right here. Actually, you know what? I'll keep that negative 1 as a reference for the other stuff. And you know what? Let me just erase that point. And then I'll fill in this axis again like that. Okay, so approximately... That's how this reciprocal function is going to look for this restricted domain. And you can make a table of values and whatnot. It's just because there's this vertical asymptote here. I wanted to generally graph this one first and then restrict the uh, domain after. Now, the next function, the next piece, is going to be 2 to the power of x minus 1. Notice that this here, it's an exponential function. So we've got y equals 2 to the power of x minus 1, like that. And so what's going to happen is uh, that function is going to start at an x value of negative 2. So if we plug in uh, negative 2, let's figure out where the y value is going to be. Well, 2 to the power of negative 2, that's just what, 0 0.25? It's like 1 over 2 to the power of positive 2, which is 1 over 4, 0 0.25, and then we'll have minus 1. And that's going to give us 0 point, or sorry, negative 0 0.75, like that, okay? So that function, this exponential function, at an x value negative 2, it's going to start at a y value of negative 0.75, but it's not including that negative 2, and so we're going to put a hole right there, okay? All right, it's not including the negative 2, so that would be a hole. If this was switched up, if this was like greater than or equal to negative two, and this was less than negative two, that first piece, then this would be a hole, this would be solid, right? But that's not the case here, 
right? So that's going to be a whole. That's going to be the starting of this exponential function. Now, you can make a table of values like I've done in previous videos. So you could put in negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, all the way up to 3, all the way to where this domain ends. And then you can make a table of values for 2 to the power of x minus 1 if you want to make it a little bit more precise than I'm going to. But all I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to plug in um, that last x value of the domain, where the domain finishes for this exponential function. And it finishes at this x value of 3. So I'm going to go, okay, what's 2 to the power of 3 minus 1? That's going to be 8 minus 1, which is 7. Okay, so it's ending at this x value of, uh, let's actually say it's like right here. It's ending at this x value of 3, and the y value is 7. Just basically, let's say it's like up here, right? So it's ending at this point, and that's a solid dot because it's less than or equal to 3. So this point here, it's going to be at 3 and 7, right? I plugged in 3 into the exponential function. I got a y value of 7. So let's erase some stuff here, make it look a little bit um, less crowded. And basically, the way this exponential function is going to look it's going to be increasing all the way to here, something like that. And I think it's actually going through the origin, so it should be going through the origin if this was more precise. Because uh, if we plug in 0 for x, 2 to the power of 0 is 1, minus 1 is 0. So again, if you made that table of values for x values between negative 2 and 3, got the actual y values, your graph should be more precise than mine. But in general, it's going to look something like this. This is this green, right? The green function is this piece right here. And then the red part, that's that first piece, that first uh, reciprocal function right there. Okay, and then the last um, function, x plus 1, let's actually just um, plug in 3 for x plus 1. Well, if we plug in 3, we'll have 3 plus 1, which is 4. So we know that linear function it's going to start at a y value of 4. Let's say a y value of 4 is like right here. So it's going to start there. That's going to be a whole, right? Because it's greater than 3. It's not greater than or equal to 3. It's just greater than 3, right? So it's not including that point. And then this is an upward sloping line. So if you plug in like 4, you'd get a y value of 5, right? If you plug in an x value of 5, you get a y value of 6, etc., etc. And so it's just going to go up like that, right? So that's the graph for uh, x plus 1. And that ends up being your final graph for this piecewise function. So a little bit trickier, right? These, um, these functions, especially this reciprocal one, it's a little tougher to deal with. Maybe if you get something like that, I'd recommend first graphing it in general, and then you could restrict the domain according to whatever piecewise function you are given. Yo, yo, what's up? Quick little intermission here. Wanted to mention a few things quickly and we'll get right back into the question. First off, if you are getting value from this video, if you can please like the video and subscribe to my channel, it does help me out a lot. Number two, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can go to the description box and there is a link that will take you to my website, allthingsmathematics.com, where all my courses are organized so you can watch the videos in order and I'd recommend doing so because lots of concepts carry over from one video to the next. Also, for lots of the courses, at the end of the chapters, you can find tests that you can practice with, and the tests have video solutions as well. Number three, if you feel like you need personalized help in tutoring, give me a shout. I currently tutor students seven days a week over Zoom, both high school and university students, one-on-one -on -one and in groups. You can text me we can discuss availability and then we can book a session. My contact details are on my website. And lastly, feel free to forward the website to any of your friends who are also taking the course, who you feel can benefit from these videos as well. Hit me up on all my socials. It's all things mathematics for all of them. Back to the video, we go. Now moving on to this second one. We got x squared plus 1 when x is not equal to negative 2. And then the second piece, we got negative 2 over x plus 1 when x is equal to 
negative two. And so before getting into graphing it, I actually wanna talk about this format a little bit, make you understand it in different ways, because notice that this is a bit of a different format, the way this domain is structured. It's not like X is less than or equal to negative two. And then for example, X is greater than negative two, which mostly you're gonna be seeing stuff like this with these um, uh, greater than or less than signs. Here, it's structured a little bit differently where they're saying for X values not equal to negative two, it's defined by this function. And then for an X value of negative two, it's defined by this function. So I actually want to rewrite this piecewise function in a different way. And so you understand better what's going on. Now, when they say for X values not equal to negative two, for all the X values not equal to negative two, the Y value is gonna be defined by this function. And so what are all the X values that are not equal to negative two? Well, if you think about it, it's X values that are less than negative two, or it's X values that are greater than negative two. And then for an X value that's equal to negative two, the Y value is defined by this function here. Now. If you ever see something like this in a piecewise function where it's X is equal to just a single number, it's not X is not equal to, it's not X is greater than or less than or greater than or equal to or less than or equal to, it's just X is equal to a number. What this means is that this represents a single point. Okay, and that makes sense. At an X value of negative two, just at that single X value, the Y value is defined by that. And so a lot of times they'll have just a number here, and then the coordinate is just gonna be negative two and that number, or whatever that number is here, that's gonna be the X value of the coordinate, and then whatever number's here, that's gonna be the Y value. But sometimes they'll put a function, a whole function, just to confuse you, just to make you think that potentially you have to graph this function, but you actually don't because it's only a single point. And so we only need the Y value at an X value of negative two on this function, right? So if we plug in negative two for the X value here, negative two plus one is negative one, negative two divided by negative one is positive two, right? And so what we can do is we can rewrite this function into three pieces. We can say when X is less than, or, or sorry, it's gonna be defined by X squared plus one when X is less than negative two. When X is equal to negative two, it's gonna have a Y value of positive two, which we got from this function. And then when X is greater than negative two, it's gonna be defined by that same function, x squared plus one, like that. So this piecewise function and this piecewise function, they're the exact same thing. When you graph both of them, you're gonna get the exact same graph. And so hopefully you understand that when you see x is not equal to a number and it's the y values are defined by a function, it means that for all the x values less than that number and all the x values greater than that number, the y values are defined by that function. In this case, it's a quadratic x squared plus one. And then whenever you see x is equal to a certain number, in this case, negative two, what they're saying is that's just gonna be a single point on the graph, right? So at an x value negative two, if I plug it into this function, I'll have a y value of positive two, okay? And I feel like this is a lot nicer to look at and to graph than this function over here. Okay, so if you get this kind of format, you could always rewrite the piecewise function into something that maybe is uh, more comfortable to look at. Now you might look at this and be comfortable with that and know how to do it and that's fine. But I just wanted to show you another way to rewrite a piecewise function that you get like this so you're more comfortable when something like this comes up because this format does come up a lot on tests. Teachers will throw it on. And then because students are used to dealing with these kinds of formats more with like less than and greater than signs, they don't really know what this means and how to deal with it. And so all we have to do is take this and graph it now. And so I'm actually going to take this one 
and make it a little bit more precise. Let's make a table of values for all these pieces. So for this one, we got negative two, uh, negative three, negative four, like that. And then um, for this one, all we have basically is an x value of negative two and we got a y value of positive two, right? That's going to be the, uh, the middle piece. And then for that other piece, we're looking at x values that are negative two and uh, greater than negative two. So let's go uh, negative one, zero. Let's just go one and two like that. Okay, so plugging these in. So plugging in negative two for this uh, negative two squared plus one, that's gonna be five. Negative three squared plus one, that's gonna be 10. Negative four squared plus one, that's gonna be 17. That we have, and then negative two uh, squared plus one, that's gonna be five. Negative one squared plus one, that's going to be two. Zero squared plus one, that's going to be one, two, and five. Now, what I want to mention before we graph this is this negative two and five, this negative two and five, it's not including the x values of negative two, right? This uh, quadratic x squared plus one doesn't include those. So that's going to be a whole for those. So what we're going to have basically is a quadratic x squared plus one with a hole at negative two and then where it's actually going to be defined is at this point right at the y value of two and because it's a different y value than five it's going to be separated from the function so this is going to be the solid dot like that okay so if you were to take this and graph it on graph paper, what you should get approximately is, um, okay, you would basically have the function x squared plus one. Now at negative two, there's gonna be a whole, let's actually make it go down a little bit more like this. So at negative two, there's gonna be a hole there. So it's gonna go to down to this vertex here, and then it's gonna come back up like that. Right? If you graph these two tables, that's basically how it would look. And then this hole is happening at a y value of 5. And so then this solid dot, let's kind of color coordinate these. So we got a y value of 2. That's basically going to be happening like right there. Okay. Again, this is not to scale. If you were to take these tables, actually draw it on proper graph paper, you'd get a more precise graph. But this green dot is happening at negative two and two. Like that it has to be a little bit above this vertex because the vertex is happening at zero, negative one. So I'm trying to make it as to scale as possible on, um, on this blackboard here. But again, you could take this, graph it on graph paper, and you'd get something a little bit more uh, precise if you were to take these tables and graph them. Right? But that's basically how this piecewise function looks like. All right, so just be on the lookout for those piecewise functions that have x is not equal to a number, and then x is equal to that number if the domain is set up in that particular way. And that's a wrap for the video. Hopefully you enjoyed that. If you want to see more videos like this, please go to my website, allthingsmathematics.com. Over there, all of the videos are organized by chapter, by section. If you feel like you need tutoring at any point, you could also hit me up. My contact details are on the website. Enjoy your day and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.